Dan Cloutier comes from Hopkinton, right here. He was born here and continues to live here and is a singer-songwriter who has been playing in the local and Boston area folk music scene for over six years now and has been an opener for some of famous national performers, uh, including Ellis Paul, Vance Gilbert, John Gorka, and more. And Dan has had the pleasure to grace the stage at Club Passim and Tupelo Music Hall and Amazing Things Center for the Performing Arts, where he hosts a wonderful venue for music on Thursday nights. And he released his first major CD, Bottles and Seeds, a few years ago, and he's brought some today, I believe, on the table. Dan spent his childhood playing basketball and baseball and trading baseball cards and also listening to rock music and writing poetry and songs around eighth grade. And he started on guitar one day when his uncle had come over and taught him a few chords on the guitar, his mother's guitar that was in a corner not being used. And that night he wrote his first song, I believe, after learning on guitar. Dan also studied history and biblical studies in college and during college lived in Jerusalem and traveled to Turkey and Jordan after college. He uh, went on to work at the Lisnow Respite Center here in Hopkinton. More recently, he was married and spent his honeymoon in Alaska. <laughs> Very nice, Dan. <laughs> Can we clap for that? Not for the ring, for the marriage. <laughs> and Dan went to Alaska for his honeymoon, and he said that he has an obsession for cold northerly places. And I'm thinking, just stay here right now, Dan. <laughs> this, is, this is my kind of weather right now. <laughs> uh, I think you're making plans to go somewhere really cold up in Canada, I remember from your notes. Quebec City in a month or so. Uh -huh, okay. <laughs> and um, Dan said one of his most memorable moments was teaching an adult with Down syndrome all the words to the Star Spangled Banner. And we have sung it together five times at the Pawtucket Red Sox. And that same adult later became my uncle as I married his niece, which is a nice story. <laughs> and Dan has some more wonderful stories and songs to share with us this morning. Please help me welcome Dan Cloutier. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you very much, Cheryl, for having me. This is wonderful. I love the town of Hopkinton. See, now the governor's wife, she opens the door. And she slips off her wedding ring She hands the maid her coat Her heart begins to sing And now across the floor there comes a wolf And he's dressed up just like a priest He can see the lamb inside her And he's, he's smiling with his teeth Lift me up don't let me fall and Hold my hand Through the masquerade ball Now in the corner I can see a judge With a lion's face for a mask and as a drunk man confesses to him, he just pours him glass after glass after glass. And all around the ballroom floor, the people they dance side by side. They just look straight ahead. They dare not look into each other's eyes. Lift me up. Ball, through that ball, through that ball, yeah. 
Now you see the maid, she was no maid at all. Oh, she was just a common thief. But when she found that wedding ring, she put it right back, cause she knew it would just bring her grief. Lift me up, and don't let me fall. And hold my hand through that masquerade ball. Lift me up. Thank you all very much. <laughs> this next song I'm going to play for you uh, commemorates event, an event that happened in Boston 90 years ago this week. Uh, I forgot about that until this morning when somebody reminded me of it and I figured I had to play it. So here we go. city down That sugar king gets in your brain and it makes all the girls look so fine Down at the forge you feel a fight Oh, the great molasses flood Oh, cause for centuries them tall ships came in With their cargo made by the slaves So people around the world can drink their New England while they work themselves to the grave Because you can still hear a plow And hit in the fields with the mighty thud A thud For the great molasses Sending molasses through the streets It was ten feet high Moving fast Knocking buildings down And people were covered From head to feet If you 
never heard this story Cause history gets lost in that sticky mud In that mud of the great molasses flood Oh, the great molasses flood Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so I, that was about the uh, molasses flood disaster happened in uh, 19 and 19, 90 years ago, two days ago. So, so uh, Cheryl was saying that I uh, love to go to northerly cold places. We went to Barrow, Alaska on our honeymoon on the Arctic Ocean. <laughs> I don't know. The, even the people up there were very confused why we were there. Like, it's, it was mid-October, it was negative five degrees outside. It was pretty cool. <laughs> I wasn't going to play this song, but uh, since the introduction, I might as well. Yeah, I'm going to run up north. I'm gonna open a bar I'm gonna meet a girl With a rusty car And I'll, and I'll be her polar bear And she'll be my little arted fox We can build our home Without a cold ice blocks and we can keep each other warm Oh, winter long Oh, just me and my girl In our house of ice Under the northern light rusty car drive to the edge of town oh but it won't be far and my my little fox will be waiting there yeah, she'll cook me up a rabbit stew we can lie down sleep the whole night through other warm and all winter long and oh just me and my girl in our house of ice under the northern light Just me and my girl in our house of ice under the northern lights. Thank you. All right. Yeah, my name is Dan Cloutier. I grew up in this lovely town of Hopkinton, Massachusetts. I actually live in Upton now. We just bought a little house in Upton, which is right close by. Um, every Thursday night in um, Framingham, Massachusetts at the Amazing Things Art Center. Um, at 7.30, I host a great open mic um, for, uh, 
for folk singers, songwriters, even poets. Anybody's welcome down there to come on down on Thursday night. So it would be great to see some of you people there. I think I got time for one more, Cheryl. Does that sound good? Well, thank you again, Town of Hopkinton. <laughs> So man walking the lonesome land oh, but I'm looking for something and I'm looking for something oh I'm looking for something Stronger than me I'm a proud man With my proud plan Oh, but I'm looking for something And I'm looking for something Oh, I'm looking for something Stronger than me Turned off my light, it seemed you were gone. So, in this darkness, help me find you for the strength to go on. Oh, the strength to go on. Oh. I'm a jealous man With these jealous hands and Oh, but I'm looking for something And I'm looking for something and Oh, I'm looking for something Stronger than me is stronger than me. Oh, oh, oh. is stronger than me. Oh, 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 oh. is stronger than me. Thank you all very much. And now we'll move on to our poet today, Adam Stone. Adam comes from Boston. He was born in the land of Sandwich, Cape Cod, which he has written about in a moving piece that can be found on YouTube. Adam discovered poetry in high school he was private about it then, but noted that one day he attended a poetry slam at Cape Cod Community College, and he, it sounds like he literally stumbled over a poster with an invitation to attend a poetry slam for the Prodigal Son Poetry Slam. At first, when Adam attempted 
poetry slams, he felt he hated them. But fortunately, something turned around because uh, Adam is out there everywhere sharing his powerful words of poetry and spoken word. He's been Cape Cod spoken word emeritus and the current champion over at the Cantab slam scene. He's been represented, he has represented 10 different slam teams, including the Boston Cantab, the Boston Lizard Lounge, over at Cape Cod, Burlington, Vermont, and Worcester. And he's been in 10 different national poetry slams. And he's represented the Boston Lizard Lounge at the 2005 Individual World Poetry Slam. And when he's not writing and performing poetry, Adam sells comics, disorganizes writing groups, and looks for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> he's currently selling two books of his poetry, titled I Think Our Song Is On Repeat, and Rib Cage Is The New Soul, and some prose books. And he's on his way to another big poetry event happening in Attleboro uh, this afternoon. So he has a busy day, and we're so glad he could be w here with us this morning. Please give a warm welcome to Adam Stone. I did this poem for the second or third time at uh, the Individual World Poetry Slam qualifier at the Middle East in Boston. And in the first round, I had done kind of my signature poem, which is very funny and very not television appropriate. And uh, it went over really well, and I got a great score, and I got up to do this love poem. And everyone was laughing. <laughs> and it's not funny. It's not sad or anything, but it's not funny. And it was one of those moments where I'm like, oh, I'm going to lose very badly when they realize this isn't supposed to be funny. <laughs> eh. Um, so I was going to do this poem for the person who offered to give me a ride today, but he's not here. But I'm going to do the poem anyways. It's called The Ninth Planet Renounces, uh, based on the fact that uh, last two years ago, they briefly decided that Pluto wasn't a planet, and then they amended that. The sky is changing every night. A dwarf star supernovas, a comet crawls millions of miles eastward. But even in those moments when the sky appears perfectly still, we are spinning towards a new horizon. This is why astronomy fails us. We grasp at that which seems most familiar. Orion's belt, Cassiopeia, we write and sing prayers to the moon because we so desperately want to believe that someone else's world revolves around us. I never wanted you to be the moon. I wanted us to be a binary planet system because without you, I am in hell. And you're the one who brought me here. So. I am Pluto, and you are Sharon, and we are spinning around each other's axes, and for generations they called you my satellite, until some astronomer decided that if I was a planet, then you must be a planet, and if you, then Cirrus, if Cirrus, then Eris, until they were eager to name every rock in our solar system planet, until that word had the authority of dust. I gave up my planethood so that we could be equal. Call me rock. Satellite, I don't care. As long as we have each other for as long as this gravity thing lasts, then I am content, spinning in the darkness around you. Now, the astronomers believe that the universe is finite, but ever-expanding. So maybe, for a split second, I was the center of your universe, and maybe a second before or a second after, I was the center of yours, and maybe someday you'll be known as one of Neptune's satellites, and I'll just be some forgotten asteroid, believed once to have been your twin. Or maybe it's true. No matter what the astronomers say, once you are named planet, you can never unbe a planet because memory is stronger than science. But I don't think it matters what I believe. I am just a rock spinning in the darkness around you because for generations people thought that's what rocks like me did. And now it's all I remember doing. I'm going to do one more for you. Um, I did a lot of music, mainly musicals, uh, before I got into poetry. 
And every once in a while, I will come across a song or two songs, and they will combine in my head, and I'll decide to write something. Um, this is kind of the opposite of that. I was going through a rough family time and was reading up on famous people who'd gone through rough family times and was reading biographies of Marvin Gaye and Jeff Buckley, which were very, very similar um, in certain ways and very different in others. And I sat down in the Boston Public Library and wrote out a version of this poem that wasn't very good and have since edited it, and hopefully to a point where it's at least kind of good. Um, so I'm going to close with this. This is called Legacy Virus. Again, thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, today. It's very weird for me to be doing poetry when there's daylight out. They like to keep poets in dark basements and things like that. And I have two gigs before the sun goes down today, and it's kind of creeping me out. All right. I want to feel the tide pull through me like a woman drunk in sin. I want to feel the fish swim through me, let the water take my skin. Whoa, mercy, mercy me. Oh, things ain't what they used to be. Oh, no. Where did all the blue skies go? Poison is the wind that blows. And the voice was the poison in his DNA, the fix that broke daddy forever. Left him orphan-faced in a shotgun shack, flailing in the bathtub, green-eyed stick figure with red ink dribbling down his chin. Jeff Buckley, Grace Boy, drowning in his father's shadow, too messed up on Legacy Virus to record that second album, so he headed down to Mud Island Harbor, hopped into the mighty Mississippi, fully clothed, singing, Take me away from all of this, take me away. Now, I understand fear of failure, fear of heights, but drowning should feel natural. We are born in fluid, conceived from fluid. Water-like enclosed spaces should feel womb-like and comforting. I've always felt comfortable floating at water's will. Loved kayaking, canoeing. My father taught me how to sail by sailing us into the center of the lake, slipping overboard and swimming to the shore he said I should follow him to. When I was 13, he took me whitewater rafting. And I will never forget the exhilaration of hitting that first class three rapid when the raft capsized and I, I floated zen-like, eyes to the sky. I didn't see my father go under, the water loving him more than the air he drowned until our guide pressed his luck against my father's chest, his kiss like fire bringing oxygen back to his lungs. My father said the last thing he remembered was this blinding white tunnel of foam reaching for his dead father's outstretched hand. Marvin Gaye Sr. never left his son wanting more father. He envied the voice that rose from his choir, drowning out his sermons but grew to despise post-coke binge paranoia, motel televisions torn apart, but the voices weren't in there. So when Marvin Jr. said, Daddy, I want to die. I just can't seem to kill myself. His father said, if that's what you want, give me the gun. We are children circling wagons around our father's names, miserable failures we for succeeding so easily successfully swimming river sticks, but daddy wasn't watching. So here's another lap. Tim Buckley left Jeff's mother not knowing she was pregnant, floated from folk to jazz and everywhere in between except father. Left behind a child who embraced his name, but rejected his legacy, refused to see talent as genetics, called his father hack. Last year I was unemployed living park bench to friend's couch, too embarrassed to tell even family. My father tracked me down via phone calls to friends. He offered me money and a place to stay. I didn't need his help. I was drowning. It felt natural. I am a barnacle man. And geology has taught me that even continents drift. Now I'm unemployed again. Dreams of comfort, nightmares of Nightmares of failure, waves crashing my sanity against the very rock friends I try to cling to. Eyes of surrender, heart drowning logic. I find myself reaching for my father's outstretched hands. Jeff, Marvin, our fathers never loved us any less than we wanted them to. Our legacy is death because everyone's legacy is death. Jeff, the tide won't wash away your DNA. Marvin, you will never pry yourself free from daddy's crying eyes, so put the wake down. 
Step away from the gun. We need your music more than your elegy. Float back to this side of the river. Put root down. Find love in the faces of the living. Write us lullabies we can sing to keep our children from drowning. Thank you. And we're moving to the third spot in today's feature here at HCAM. And that will be John Gerard, who will be sharing some music with us in a few moments. John lives in Marlboro, Massachusetts. He was born in Paris, France. He grew up listening to Billy Joel, The Police, Serge Gainsbourg, The Dirty Mouth of French Pop. He moved to Massachusetts in the late 70s and then was introduced to the musical likes of Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, Iron Maiden, and more. And these sounds inspired him to form a band at 14. John wrote his first song in science class in sophomore year. Since being in a number of bands, he went on to become a solo musician. And he went on to work a number of different types of job after high school, ranging from telephone operator for the Westboro Psychiatric Hospital to being a chef. Currently, he earns his living playing the streets and subways of Boston and Cambridge, selling thousands of his CDs. His stage and street presence is compelling, and people often don't, don't take a bus, let their, pa uh, their bus or their train pass by to hear John's next song. He recently sold a song to an HBO film producer who was walking by on the subway and said that he never stopped to listen to a street performer before in his life. And so this song will be part of a movie to be released in theaters later this year. I believe it's a documentary related to uh, the incident uh, with girls in Gloucester who were in the news and exploring uh, that uh, story more as documentary film. When John was asked for a funniest moment sharing his songs, he said it was announcing to the audience that he was going to cover a Prince song, which I don't think is funny because I love Prince. <laughs> so I want to hear it. <laughs> and when asked, when asked, what do you think about life that inspires your songwriting? John said, generally, life itself. I'm always amazed at what simple things, such as an old sink, can inspire in me. And I wonder who has used it. And I just take it from there. So here to show, share some of his stories and his songs, please help me welcome John Gerard. I'm going to do some funny songs, some sad songs, some sadder songs. So I'm going to take you, start you here, and it's your job to get there. I was going to do this cover that you guys will know, but I think I'd rather uh, introduce you to this other song. That's a cover by an uh, artist named Hamill on Trial. This song is about indifference and uh, tolerance. So here we go. Tina Brandon Brian Denneke Met for a coffee And having last week he says I like my black And she said do you want to go back He said no We can be who we want to be He said no Wanna be Matthew Shepard draw by for dessert. They ask Matthew, does it still hurt? And he paused and spit over the rail. flew 
down to earth just like hell And he said no We can be who we want to be He said no We can be who we want to be Down on earth He held her tight She held her tight He held him tight It was the morning Oh, they cried all night Through the window They saw the hell And she asked him, have we failed? And he said, no, we can be who we want to be. He said, no, we can be who we want to be. We can be who we want to be. We can be who we want to be Thank you I'm glad there's a lot of room here Because I, I tend to move So This is uh, This caters to my pop sensibility This next song which I wrote, uh, went to this convention, I met someone, we became friends, and I said, I doubt we'll be friends after this. Oh, no, we will. I said, no, we won't. I'm a lousy friend, I don't call. <laughs> but I'll write a song about it, so it's called Easier. Nowhere to run, there's nowhere to hide. Anymore with that great hole in your heart You knock on my door You've been calling me all night And then I know what you want I know what you need And you don't have to beg me on your knees No, you don't I will make it easier on you I'll meet you on the way I'll make it easier on you I'll meet you on the way I'll make it easier Tired and withdrawn, Suki's in your hand. You came by to say goodbye, and I know that you don't really wanna leave. No, oh man, I recognize tone in your voice, full of shame and full of remorse. For all the things you left behind And I will make it easier on you I'll meet you all the way I'll make it easier on you I'll meet you all the way I'll make it easier on you Honey, all you gotta do is wait All you gotta do is wait mm, All you gotta do is wait Is wait, is wait Come on and wait No, no, no Sadly, you came today. A letter.
out of that red you found yourself a new man someone to wrap your arms around and I will make it easier on you I'll meet you all the way I'll make it easier on you I'll meet you all the way I'll make it easier I'll make it easier This song is about a couple, I, I do tend to just see things and write songs and this is about a couple that I just sort of made up and just a moment in their lives. I'm crumble the tin foil and scrape the bottom for one more hit my fingers through the ashtray for a little bit of hope I sit by the window and stare the traffic down below and in distance I hear Muffled horns Let me be here when the morning comes On my knees and humbled my last song thanks very much I saw somebody today um, that I hadn't seen in a while and uh, catalyst in me really getting out there and playing and I did a live show once and 
he he went woo at a certain part, and I, I thought, of course, he would get that part. So I'll leave his name out of the equation because it doesn't matter. But this is called Monsters. I thank you for your time. Um, it's nice because you guys aren't walking around. There's no trains. People always talk on their phone right in front of me when I when I play. I don't know why. Oh, they're like, can I sing? No. Oh, there goes that. I'm sorry. All right, this is called Monsters. Well, it said I, I listen to heavy metal, so you guys needed a little. <laughs> I'm gonna move around now, people out there, so. I never care when the dust would come. Can't the moon leave the sun well enough alone? Nothing good ever comes in the night. Drunken fathers want to be better dads Mothers longing for better men And little boys stuck in the middle Waging a war inside their head Found a safe place to hide Get on my knees and prayed real hard Lord, I'm asking, will you take me away? Help me find a place where the silence never breaks Sometimes it lasts for days Sometimes it lasts for months He bring her flowers and sing her favorite song But eventually go back to the way it's been My father drinking and my mother screaming in vain Eventually go back to the way it's been Mother screaming, screaming Oh no, I found a safe enough place to hide Get on my knees and pray real hard Lord, I'm asking, will you take me away? Help me find a place where the silence never breaks I found a safe place to hide I got on my knees and I prayed real, real hard But Lord, you never answered me Come on, answer me this one time Oh, this one time Oh, this once just this once, just this once Eventually you learn not to worry about, about, about the little things You learn to enjoy every single little moment Cause no one really cares if the sky turns gray My mother's flowers spill and stain the carpet red I found a safe enough place to hide And get on my knees and pray real hard My Lord, you never answered me You never answered me I found a safe enough place to hide Get on my knees and prayed real hard But Lord, you never answered me You never answered me This is a first iteration of trying to put one of Trisha's poems to music, and in uh, very different than the one she just read, 
first time I heard this, and she did write it kind of so I could turn it into a song. Um, it seemed like a lullaby that she wrote for herself. <laughs> Kicking bits of moonbeams from the floor Which seem to scamp and scurry under doors Spill from leaky windows through the hall Places where they shouldn't be at all I know it's hard to tame such wild things But who knew moonlight came with tiny wings The ones that flutter in and catch my eyes And take my heart so fully by surprise the time to laugh <clears throat> and cry, which is what I always do when I come. Um, <clears throat> right now, I'm doing a lot of crying. I uh, lost a daughter-in-law due to some confusions between cigarettes and jeans um, in December, December 12th. So I, uh, have, I have two almost poems. Um, I couldn't decide which one to read. Um, I wish I could sing them to you. That's what I wish. Um, they will keep changing. Um, here. <laughs> I embracing myself against frigid temperatures outside. I know there are places without heat or safety. Yet my shoulders hunch greedily to hold in body heat. No mingling of self with other. I tighten against news. We'll go to any lengths not to know the ways I could die. Joplin sings on my car CD player. She and Bobby McGee, freedom. And that there's nothing left to lose. Is this what I didn't want to know, holding your dying body? Or is it that when Orioles fly, <clears throat> as they do each summer, from our lake to our trees, I won't be the one who sees them from a window facing what was once our backyard. That's it. Thank you. I have a couple of uh, sets of lyrics that I thought I'd read as poems today. Uh, they're songs that I wasn't quite satisfied with. Ironically, because of the fact that uh, I worked on them to uh, 
read them today, I think they're ready to be songs. <laughs> Maybe that's what we call poetic justice. First one is dreaming. I actually started to write it on the 11th of September this fall. I ride the Metro Liner, New York, my journey's end. Sad to leave my family, but bound to see old friends. The train is whisper quiet, every face is white. We glide past broken cities to tunnel, dark as night. We spill out on the landing and climb to find the light. Through hallways overcrowded, we rush as if in flight. But on the teeming subway that runs up 7th Ave, I take in all the faces and tongues our country has. And am I only dreaming, as someone seems to say? Don't let the old dividers unfurl their hateful ways. By chance, it's 9-11, year seven past that day, yet all these busy people proceed right on their way. But as the dark descends this night, a moment of no sound, silent toast to all the hopes that died on hallowed ground. And am I only dreaming, as someone seems to say, don't let the old dividers unfurl their hateful ways. And now it's some time after, well past election eve. In light of all that's happened, I do want to believe that we have honored all those hopes, that hope is here to stay. But as I look back on this life, hate always seeks to stay. So, no, we are not dreaming, but we must stand and stay. Don't let the old dividers unfurl their hateful ways. Um, this one's called Day is Done. Dark says hello, night is near. Move the pillow to the chair. Start the fire, check the grate. Be not tired, it's not late. Like the embers, she is still here, he remembers. Day is done. Gently ringing, he can still hear her voice bringing gentle song, soft cascading, but then fading. He remembers. Day is done. Gentle firelight finds her face framed in picture in its place. Spread the coals, close the grate. Room grown cold, hour grown late. Like the embers, she is still here. He remembers. Day is done. Thank you. I sing a song I uh, um, wrote after reading a collection of essays by uh, Gary Snyder, and within that book there was a uh, he does a has a retelling of the, of a Native uh, American story about a woman who marries a bear, and uh, this song uh, looks at that story from the point of view of the bear. <laughs> And there's an image in there that I, I always use to console myself when it's really bitter cold in the dead of winter. She talks about, even though it's still winter outside, deep, elite, deep beneath the snow, the earth is starting to darken, which means there's something coming. <clears throat> Come and lie beside me now, if only for the rest. Come and lie beside me Place your hand upon my chest Take the rhythm of my heart And take it to your song Cause you know and I know We shall sing before too long Yes, I will never see the dancing grass again, I know. 
The earth already darkens deep beneath the snow. And your brother's voice is carry the hour singing of the wind. And I can taste the taste of ashes singing of the end. When first I found you, you were lost, lost into my eyes. Lost into a darkness that you feared and that you prized. For your soul or for your song, did you give yourself to me? Was this something that you captured or something I set free? Now come and lie beside me now and take the things I'd give. Take them to your song, for it's there my soul might live. But there's something of your music so much stronger than the words. The unseen hand beneath the wing that lifts the soaring bird. Now ashes pool around the stones as morning waits to speak. The words I do not want and the stories others seek. His throat is full of sadness and empty of the breath. It takes to tell the dawning day, the legend of my death. Now come and lie beside me now, if only for the rest. Come and lie beside me and place your hand upon my chest. Take the rhythm of my heart and bring it to your song. For you know and I know we shall sing before too long. Well, this poem is about, uh, it's called I Fear I Am Becoming What I Do. And it's about a carpenter of uh, who fears that he's becoming what, what he does, but it could be about anybody, computers or whatever you do for a living. You, know, you do it eight hours a day, you come home and you hang around with people at night who do the same thing, you talk about it and you bore your wife to death with it and then that's you know, it, it becomes a one-trick pony, I guess. Oh, yes. uh, I fear I'm becoming what I do. A one who plots voiceless angles in outer dimensions, who engages in silent negotiation with plaster and wood, stress and load, whose hands reach in dull, blunt caress, who seduces sexless shapes into electric symmetry and drafty, unheated assignation. Sawdust coats my tongue and throat. The act of swallowing replaces, one by one, my bones with wood. I fear I am becoming what I do. I'm losing the ability to speak on subjects in the liberal arts and culture Phrases not prefaced by inches and angles are stalked and killed by inattention. As waves of form and function co-opt my inner voice, my lover punishes me with long sentences. I exhale fine silt of wood and chalk, a breath of cosmic motes that hangs a moment as swirling particles of planetary dust and stars that slowly settles while dancing in shafts of sunlight slanting through newly installed windows. I fear I am becoming what I do. Framing endless walls, each stud yet another bar or stone in the Berlin Wall of my life. Confined, neither hunted nor hunter, while poets and priests, seekers and sages, 
flow in and out of furnished rooms through doorways leading to ever somewhere else. My hands are at war with the rough bars, each splinter an opiate needle to anesthetize a fleeting dream. My kind lover plies me with wine while she operates by candlelight. In the course of the day, my fingertips are worn, anonymous, smooth. Through repetitive labors, I give birth to my inward self. Sweat and blood droplets drip and seep into sawdust furrows, where they commingle and germinate, then ripen in silent darkness. I arrive in the morning to my freshly reaped form. I have become my own stamen and pistol, pollen and seed, in cold orbit circling my own nucleus. Each day a degree more competent and a generation more inbred. I fear I am becoming what I do. The whir of saws and din of drills follows me into hushed rooms as mosquitoes and gnats drowning out my lover's sighs. They invade the private spaces of my mind, finding their way through screens and netting to swarm about my ears. Silenced only by the drone of whiskey, I'm sorry, silenced by only by the drone of television and the Niagara roar of whiskey. Entering homes and cafes and theaters, at first not addressing those mingling interacting forms or anticipating the projected action on silver screen. My lover knowingly squeezes my hand and waits while the levels and plums of my mind follow my eyes and calculate the incidents of wall meeting ceiling or detect the flaws in the joining of sections of crown molding. I fear I am becoming what I do. Thank you. A storm of emotion
When I look back, will I be who I wanted to be? And when I check out, will I know I have left a good legacy? Will I question all the choices I made, the regrets that I say? Inside, inside, oh, inside, oh, 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 oh. This is called What Are You Doing? Doesn't belong, and you cry 
like a baby when it's gone What are you doing with your So I wrote this poem called Grand Groundhog's Shadow with our Groundhog Day coming up. At the end of summer and into fall, the groundhog eats and eats, becoming plump and round, and finally descends into the ground, entering a tunnel to a waiting space, closing eyes and finds the place. Breath becomes slower and slower yet again. Heartbeat matches the pace allowing body to become a suspension of time. With all systems on hold, breath is making sacred space. While the cold and snow and sleet and icy rain pelt the scenery above, the groundhog remains serenely poised and is dreaming for us all. Joined by his four-legged cousins, bear and squirrel, they all join the dream time state. All are in suspended animation. All are holding the spirit time alive while the winter above rages on. At the time of midwinter, we remember the sleeping groundhog and ask for a reckoning. The groundhog in full fling of winter's dreaming rouses slowly, so slowly to our calling, and keeping the mantle of the dream state close around him, returns for a peek at the landscape above. Groundhog peruses the air with nose first, longing for a whiff of mud, longing for the aroma of a fresh breeze, but instead smells the crisp air emanating from intricate ice crystals, making up the present winter scene. Groundhog squints sleepy eyes for a tiny sliver of view and brings all the colors from the dream state into the stark landscape bringing the dream through and infusing the land with the heightened reality only a dream can bring. Music from the deep resounds across the scene, magnetic rainbow aurora borealis now revealed, and sweeping colors paint the winter sky and are reflected across the snowy land below. The sun pulsing strong, becoming stronger, casts long shadows, and the day becomes transformed once more. Groundhog gazing into shadow now remembers place of deep and turns and returns to the dark below, leaving the dream time state to linger across the landscape to remind everyone of the true reality of the altered days of winter. Thank you, hibernating nations, and to Groundhog for this day, for the integration and power of the dream. Inspired by a film by Denis Arcan, which is called Barbarian Invasions, and, um, and it's called Barbarian Invaders. <sighs> love me tender, love, 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 she loves you, yeah. That death is inevitable is why we bite big of life, soar, sail, that barbarian invaders may take it away in an instant replay on the telly, return again and again, and journalists have to stay home Christmas, hold down the fort for the fear of it, chisels the crystal of life. For those of us who survive the barbarian invasions, take toll the ruin, the carnage, the particulate memory we can't bury, we kick butt to hang on, banter with loved ones, see that all we really need as we live to die, that very mainline fix, is love. I'm reading a, a short, short poem out of my book, Harvesting Ice, that just came out. It's called Five Sides. I am territorial and don't find it easy to give away my heart. I keep it under a rock shelter. 
Too familiar with calls galore and he-man charm, I am not blinded by them, and no a display of bad manners when I see it. So don't think I'll ask how goes your concerto. Don't think I'll fall at your feet just because you bring me a rose. My heart, like the center of an apple, reveals a perfect pentagon. Few have seen its five sides. The path of Venus is the same. Having traveled it in search of the ultimate unknown meaning, time and space have no significance. On the whole, I am coupled with the earth. Hence, my sometimes sudden disappearance into red ochre, spears, and native tobacco where I recreate my heart with flint. On occasion it goes through a storm birth, and filled once more I bring it out, lift it up like a chalice in the air, so you can sing and play your lyre. I often write songs on a train, and it was a haiku before it was a song, passing through Chicago, the south side of Chicago. Let's see, haikus, five, seven, five. Fancy church, old tires, bars on windows, razor wire, Chicago, south side. And it turned into a song as I was going under the Continental Divide on the same trip um, at about 9,000 feet elevation. And uh, the song is called Chicago, south side. Let me hold this position this a little bit better here. <clears throat> One more time. Fancy church, old tires, bars on windows, razor wire. Most don't live here, many do. It's hard to make a dream come true, Chicago. Outside. Okay, second verse. Um, concrete jungle, concrete tomb, but in the summer it's not all gloom. For a garden, some make room. From tiny yards, the gardens bloom. Chicago, Southside. church, old tires, bars on windows, razor wire. Most don't live here, many do, but you can make a dream come true, Chicago. This is the subject of my poem this morning, to celebrate that new year. And it is the year of the ox. Taoist myth tells the tale. Ox came from stars to teach us work. To our tumultuous world, ox brings strength, steady diligence, patience. Put the house in order, dictates ox. Protect our earth with integrity, hard work, unrelenting pursuit. Toil we must to follow ox's way. Spirit dictates goals, mind foresees consequences, body builds form. Peaceful partnerships bring results. 
Under Ox's guidance, our new world emerges step by step, moment by moment. Thank you. That wraps up our open mic for today. I want to thank all of you who contributed. It was just wonderful. Thank you so much. A hand for all of you. And for all of you who came out in the cold to be here in audience, thank you for coming. Please come back. And for our features again today, Dan Cloutier, John Gerard, Adam Stone, we're so happy to hear them. Uh, one more hand for them. That's right, Jeremiah. <laughs> wife she opens the door and she slips off her wedding ring she hands the maid her coat her heart begins to sing and now across the floor there comes a wolf and he's dressed up just like a priest he can see the lamb inside her and he's he's smiling with his teeth Lift me up, don't let me fall Hold my hand Through the masquerade ball Now in the corner I can see a judge the lion's face for a mask and as a drunk man confesses to him he just pours him glass after glass after glass and all around the ballroom floor the people they dance side by side they just look straight ahead they dare not look into each other's eyes lift me up me fall